Okay, we're here for media availability with Cal offensive line coach and run game coordinator Mike Blesch for uh, August 30th. Go ahead and let me know if you have a question in the chat and we'll uh, we'll call upon you. We'll start with Brett Vito from the Denton Chronicle Record. Hey coach, how you doing? Good, how you doing Brett? Oh, not bad. Just wanted to hop on here and ask you, you know, about facing your former team in does that give you any kind of insight, you know, knowing Mason, knowing Rod and some of these guys that you practiced against for all those years now that you're on the other sideline? Yeah, I mean, definitely know a lot of the personnel on their football team. I know um, recruited a bunch of those kids. And so excited <laughs> to see them. I'm a fan of those of those guys and appreciate how hard they worked and played for us while we were there. Uh, but they've got a new coaching staff now. They've got new schemes. They've got um, – you know, new positions, and I know they've work, uh, been working and growing as players since I left, and uh, it'll just be interesting to see those guys again. And we'll go to Jake Curtis. We will limit it to a single question on the first go-round, and then we'll uh, entertain follow-ups the second time around. So, Jake Curtis from Cal Sports Report. Hello, Mike. When you took Cal down for Texas with the opening game of this season, and what, what's your reaction to just facing them again? Can you uh, repeat the question? You're kind of choppy, choppy. Did you know when you took the Cal job that North Texas was the opener for Cal? And what's your general reaction to plan then? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously when I, I did accept the job, I, first thing I did was look at the schedule and I just was shocked that that was the way it all lined up. Um, you know, our profession, you just focus on the here and the now. And so even last year when I was at North Texas, really – hadn't looked ahead to the 2023 schedule. And so uh, definitely kind of surreal. And, uh, but, you know, I haven't really thought about it being more than what it is. You know, I had a great time at North Texas. I have a lot of friends and family that will be at the game. Um, my kids and my wife will be there. So it's going to be a fun weekend for me. Okay, are there other questions here? I'm going to Matt Moreno from Cal Rivals. Kind of on that note, how many questions have you got about just the weather and what to expect from some of these players that haven't been out there in Texas yet? Yeah, we've talked about it. You know, I, uh, you know, we have quite a few guys on our roster from Texas. Uh, there's nothing we can do to simulate the weather in Texas. So uh, I do feel like we've done a really good job of getting high quality work and high quality reps throughout fall camp. That is something that we couldn't always do, uh, spend as much time outside when I was at North Texas. So you know, I think you can look at it from both ends of the spectrum uh, that our guys haven't been beat down by it for the last month. But, yeah, there's no way for us to simulate that out here. Okay. Are there other first-round questions? We do ask that you make sure to keep uh, stay on mute as well. Okay. We'll go ahead and go for – our. we do have another first round. Or actually, question two from Jake Curtis. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, Mike, could you give us a, just a one sentence on Adayo and Regsdale? Man, those guys are tough and electric would be what I would say. Um, you know, did a lot of great things for us while we were there. And are you surprised at all that uh, Stone Earl's the starting quarterback? No, not at all. Uh, I, I was the quarterback coach there last year, recruited Stone in, uh, had Stone packaged in multiple games last year. I'm proud of him. And I think he's going to do a great job this season. How much do you think you actually help by knowing the personnel to give information to Cal's coaches now? I mean, it, you, your, your resume is your film, right? And that's what we talk to our players about all the time. So at the end of the day, coaches are still going to watch the game film we have of their players. We're doing that. Um, they're doing that, watching us from last year. So, you know, we're smart enough to, to look at tape and know who is who and what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. Okay, are there any other questions for Coach Blesh? Okay, we'll go back to Matt Moreno from Cal Rivals. Uh, Coach was talking to us yesterday, and he mentioned, you know, that there could be as many as eight, nine, ten offensive linemen used in this game. Feels like a lot of positions are going to have a pretty heavy rotation. Um, you know, what's kind of the plan for the offensive line going to this game? And, and who are some of those guys you expect to see uh, out there on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, those those guys that are in the two deep, um, I feel really good about those those 10 guys. Um, we've really kind of grown and come together 
Uh, we've trained the second group of offensive linemen in multiple positions. Um, and, you know, the challenge for the first group is, you know, if you're playing lights out and you're running around and, and playing with, with high effort, then there's no need for me to put somebody in. But that's definitely something I'll, I'll gauge throughout the game. And we have guys that I think are, are very capable to go in there and, uh, you know, just spell somebody for a series and then, and then get the starters back in. So uh, that'll kind of be a game time decision for me. Uh, Matthew Sendrick has obviously been a big part of kind of what you're trying to do this year, going to make his return to the field. What has he meant to you as, as a coach and, and a leader in that room? And, and what's he mean to this group uh, of offensive linemen? Yeah, he's been awesome. Uh, I think he's made my job a lot easier since I got here. Uh, I think I told you last time we talked, whenever, when I got hired, you know, he was the first guy I heard about. And I kind of heard that he was on the fence of whether to return from a, a season in, ending injury last year. And he was the first phone call I made and we had a great 20, 30 minute conversation and just kind of told him my plan and told him a little bit about me and, and, and really wanted him to be back and, and buy in to, to going out on a high note. And I think, you know, he has done everything I've asked of him. He's been an unbelievable leader for our offensive line, for our offense. And I'm excited to watch him play this year. And last one for me, just uh, Barrett Miller, since we last talked, obviously it was early in camp. He was still kind of working his way up. What did he show you over the course of, you know, training camp to to solidify that spot at left tackle. And, and what are your expectations for him now that he's part of that first group? Yeah, Barrett's done a great job, you know, coming in here and and uh, just really adjusting to to the move across the bay very, very easily. Um, he's he's a very big guy. He brings just power and strength at that position. Uh, but the thing I like about Barrett is he's very technically sound. He He utilizes the techniques and fundamentals that we're coaching and and at the end of the day, that's what all those guys, that's what I tell all of those guys. I need five guys working as one. Um, it's not about being a guy that's out there doing your own thing and playing your own game. we got to play good, complimentary offensive line football. Okay, are there any final questions for Coach? Okay, we'll go to Michael Wagaman from Bear Insider. Hey, Coach. You had mentioned your wife and kids are down there. Are they still living in Texas? No, they're living here in the Bay okay. Area, but they're going. We're we're all they're going to catch a flight tomorrow morning, and uh, they'll be down there for the weekend with family and friends for the game. Nice. Yeah. Thank you.